Thank you so much. It, um, it does not feel like it's been 28 years. Uh, huh? And so, um, but um, as I posted on Facebook this, this morning, it has been quite the, the adventure-filled and faithful journey in ministry. One of the best jobs there, I there is. Are there any other an announcements? I'm looking at Kathy, and I'm going to say a reminder that if you have, Please. yes. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, Stu. Yay! Congratulations, Stu. I'm just writing that down so, so I remember it. Are there any others? Seeing none, then let us begin our worship with our prelude. Good morning. Good morning. 
Please join me in the call to worship. Come into the land of God. We come seeking the land of love. Live as the people of Christ. We gather to grow as a community of love. Follow in the ways of the Lord. We move forward on the path of love. Come, young and old, friend and foreigner, for all are welcome here. We come to live and grow in the love of Christ. O oh God, you are our God, and we come as your people on earth. Gather us in that we may remember the ties that bind us together in your love. Write your law upon our hearts that others may find us to be generous and loving friends. Strengthen us by your spirit that we may live in love, a love that transforms our lives even as we help to transform the lives of others. In the hope of your miraculous love, we pray, amen.
God calls us to lead lives of love. And sometimes we choose to lead lives of everything but love. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. Helper God, be the hope that overcomes our despair. Be the love that overcomes our hatred. Be the mercy that overcomes our sin. Set us free from the prisons of our own making and release us from the bonds that bind us. Forgive us and watch over us. Welcome us home into the loving arms of your mercy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, you are not far from the kingdom of God, for in Christ we are given grace and forgiveness. Thanks be to God. What box? Oh my God. Hello? That's better. Wow. Or if it's too much of, of a pain, no. you can turn it off. Wait a minute. No, that's okay. <laughs> a first, a microphone on me. Wow. Okay, so. What's in the box? Eh, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait. Oh, now we'll wait. So uh, this, is, this is the fall time, right? This is my favorite time of the year because it gets cold around. It's World Series time. Well, not so much this year, whatever. But, uh, and, then, and then I love how the leaves turn colors, OK? I love, I love that part. And this is, this, is my, this is my favorite time of the year. So I want to show you something. Stay there. OK. I think the old box open makes noise. Forget about it. Okay. So I got some leaves here, okay? What color is that? Green. What color is that? And what color is that? Brown. 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 Oh, red. Forget about it. And then what's this one? Yellow. So it's kind of in these stages, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you something really cool, though. All right, so you see how these, these leaves are? And they were on the tree until like, I guess that was Friday night or Thursday night, when everything was blown sideways. OK. So we're going to talk about this. This is a special one. We'll come back to this one in just a minute. OK? Now we'll put it over here. Just a minute. Do you know that, do you know how the leaves come off the trees? Yes. Please tell me. The wind is one way. That's absolutely correct. What's another way? Same thing. Same thing. Give me another way. 
Savannah, do you know? Because it gets cold. Absolutely correct, because it gets cold. It's a little more detailed, so I wrote, the, I wrote it down so that I'm absolutely accurate. Have you ever heard of the word abscission? No. Oh, we talk about it all the time. You did. I knew you knew that. Very good. Abscission. And for those of that don't know, you and I know. For those that don't know abscission, abscission is the process whereby once the way God designed the plants and the trees, once it starts getting cold out, what happens is the chemicals in the trees, hormones, start sending signal, the tree sends a signal when it senses the cold, and it says to the tree, stop feeding the leaves on the tree. Stop sending food there. Save the food in the rest of the tree so that we have food over the winter. So one of the first things that dies in the, tr in the leaf is what makes the leaf green. And do you know what that's called? Called chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll goes away, and you see these beauties. This is, a, I, I tell you what, I like to draw, but I couldn't do any coloring like that. Look at that color. It's, it's red, yellow, and green. Of course. Well done. Well done. So, so once the chlorophyll's gone, then the, the, what color do the leaves turn? Those colors, right. But what, can we enumerate them, please? Orange. Well, forget about the green, because the green's going away, because the chlorophyll is what makes them green. So it goes away, and you're left with those beautiful. So if you drive by, and you see these maples that look like they're on fire. There's red, there's orange. There is nothing more beautiful in this time of the year, when, before the leaves come down, to see all those leaves changing colors. I think they're absolutely magnificent. Like dwarf colors. What's that? Like dwarf colors. Yes, exactly. But do you know those leaves will not fall down until they're supposed to? Do you know why? What happens if my arm was a branch and I had a hundred leaves on it, okay, and they all fell off? I'd have all these attachment spots that bugs could get in, disease could get in, all that other stuff. Squirrels, um, very small squirrels, but yeah, okay. But what happens is the way God designed the tree is that underneath that attachment point, so if, the, if it goes like this here, right under here, a whole layer of cells develops, like a scab. You've forgotten scabs when, you know, like you broke something over your head or whatever, or your hand, you got a cut, and you got a scab. Well, that's what happens. And once the scab's there, then the leaf does this. It falls off. But it will not fall. It will not fall off until there's a, a scab. But wait a minute. What about all those leaves on the ground? So you're absolutely right. Look at this. See that one there? But what's, where's that one on here? because it got torn off by the wind. You're absolutely right. So when this one fell, it was green, and it got torn off by that big wind we had the other night. This one, it was its time to come off because it's got the end on, it's completely sealed, and then the leaf just goes into the box. Isn't that great? Oh, this is all done by God, by design. It's not magic. It's all done by God's design. So where do we, how do we know that? So let's slide over here to the book of Genesis for just two seconds. And we read in Genesis 1, the creation account here, it says, And God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees and on the land and the, that bear fruit with the seed in it, and according to their various kinds. And it was so. This, the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed according to their kind. And God said that it was good. Good. God said that it was good. So, God designed the trees. God designed you. God made you. God loves you. This is, this is great stuff. The beauty of these things are, oh, the green one's okay, but these are just so magnificent. And, and it says in the Bible, if God so clothed the grass, the grass, you look outside, everything's beautiful. If God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into an oven, will he not much more clothe you? And he will, won't he? Everything you have, everything you need, God provides. Even something so silly and little as a leaf, God has provided so that the tree doesn't get hurt before the leaves come off. And it gets to eat for the summer, for the winter, out of what it's stored up in the rest of the tree. So God loves you. God protects you. God wants you to listen to your parents and learn more about him. And we're going to help you with that for the rest of your lives as you come to Sunday school and listen to us. And we're going to tell you great stories about trees. How about that? Yeah. Who made the trees? Me. 
You may plant a tree. Who made the trees? And he did it for his glory and for our, for our happiness to see these beautiful trees. That question of the day, did Jesus help him make stuff? Well, where do you think we can find that answer? Yes, two books. John, for, uh, the Gospel of John in chapter 1 and in the, in the uh, letter to the Colossians in chapter 1. And I encourage you to read about it because Jesus says every, uh, there was nothing made that was made that was without him. And in the Colossians, it talks about how he created everything. So, yes, yes, yes. And then really, the first couple of words of the Bible, in the beginning, God, he created everything. So, excellent, excellent, excellent. This was a good day. Let's have a prayer, okay? Is that a prayer? Okay. Lord, we thank you for this day and all your many blessings. We thank you for these little ones. We thank you for their, their hearts. They have a desire to reach out to you. Lord, we pray that you would fill those desires. Touch their parents, their grandparents, and anyone that brought them here. Bless them and, and keep them in your mighty right hand, Lord. And it's in your name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Okay. You may go. You may go. Eat it. <laughs> Play hide and seek. Hide and seek. Okay, bye bye. Before turning to scripture, let us pray. We are called to love God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves with kindness and care. May hearing these words inspire us to live lives of mercy and grace, amen. The first scripture lesson comes from Deuteronomy chapter six, verses one through nine. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and, you are, and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. The second lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked them, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other, and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, 
and to love one's neighbor as oneself. There is much more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared ask him any question. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy words. Love God, love your neighbors, and teach your children to love like this. I could sit down now, but I'd be breaking one of the cardinal rules of preaching. Don't be too short. I know, Bob, you're saying there is never too short of a sermon. But, you know, pastors like politicians can't do that. But both the Pentateuch and Jesus are clear. Love is the answer. Everything else is commentary. And it really is. The commandments and the other laws found in the Hebrew Bible teach people how to live lives that show God's love to everyone they meet. The many laws are not meant to bog people down in details, but to help people love better. Yet, in reality, that doesn't always work because we humans like to get bogged down in details, and we like to be the best at what we are doing, especially if we can compete against other people and say that we're following God's rules better than they are. But that's not what God was thinking. God was thinking love. Remember that God loves you. Remember to love God. Remember to love every single day, every single moment. Teach your children how to love. This is what the author of Deuteronomy is saying to the people. And the big fear as the people were moving to begin to live once again in the promised land, the big fear was that they were going to forget to rely on and to love God. Jesus also reminds the people who were following him to focus on love. In this passage from Mark, a scribe overhears Jesus talking and teaching and joins into the into the discussion. And unlike the other religious authorities, This one scribe listens carefully and realizes that what Jesus is teaching is correct. All of the law and all of the commandments can be reduced to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, in in many ways, gives the ancient tradition a modern twist. Jesus at this moment was interpreting the Shema. The Shema is the most important prayer in Judaism. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Jesus took this most important prayer and made it more relevant for his time. And the scribe realized this, and he realized the wisdom of Jesus' teachings. Because Jesus takes the teaching of the law and made it relevant to the day-to-day lives of those living in his time. This 
constant reinterpretation of tradition is necessary so that the faith of our ancestors is still a vital force in our lives today. Today, we honor that a little over 500 years ago, Martin Luther did the same thing. When Martin Luther tacked his 95 theses or his 95 points of discussion to the bulletin board next to the door of the Academy Church in Wittenberg, he wanted to begin a dialogue about the traditions in the church at that time and if and how they needed to be changed. Well, the church authorities of that time were so threatened by what R Luther wrote that they declared him a heretic and the Reformation began. Luther began a theological, religious, and cultural revolution because he wanted to bring the church's tradition in line to what the average person was thinking and feeling and living. This congregation has also interpreted the tradition of our forebears to make the faith relevant and vital for each generation. Matt just did that as he used leaves and related to the kids what God does for us each and every day in a way that they could understand. And if most of us admit it, most adults say we understand those more too. When we read our history, or when we wander through the cemetery, we can see how beliefs and traditions have adapted over time. We can see how the day-to-day -day lives and what was going on influenced faith and the way that that faith is lived. We need to remember this, though. The details have changed. The details only have changed. Not the faith in or the love for and of God. That stays forever, eternally. The details, the how and the whys and the who therefores and the, and the where we put this and what color do we use and where does the flowers go and what color are the pew cushions, those are the details. The faith, the stuff that is transcendent, is transcendent because it is eternal. And that is God's love. Shortly, we will honor those among us who have, been, who have been members of this congregation for 50 years and more. They are the living embodiment that remind us of the traditions and the history of this congregation, yet in their lives that were lived, also remind us that our faith and those traditions are dynamic. And my example is going to be the saint who we said goodbye to this past summer, summer Emma Arrow, when she, at her service, it was stated many times, she was in the first class of women elders of this church. And, and at that time, it was, that was a huge deal. And now we don't think anything of it. I am also the third female pastor of this church. 
I'm sure the first, uh, actually no, because there was also Leslie, so at least four. Diane, okay, so a lot. So many that I can't even keep count of. But the first was a very big deal. These are the traditions that change. But this congregation's love of and for God and love of neighbor has stood the test of time since 1675 and will continue, we all hope and pray, for eternity. That is the important thing. The, dyna the dynamic nature of life and the constancy and the eternity of God's love. Traditions change because each generation makes the faith its own, as each generation needs to, so that it is relevant and it is vital and it, in and it inspires the future generations. Yet God's eternal love for us, our love of and for God, the call to love our neighbor and to teach all of this to our children lasts forever. May it be so. Amen. I invite all who are able to rise and join me as we affirm our faith in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Well, once again, I have talked nice and loud so my mother-in-law can hear me. Um, once again, I have the honor of recognizing those members that have been with us for 50 years or more. I've had the pleasure of doing this for about the last 10 years now. And um, every year, it always amazes me. It rains first thing in the morning, but the sun always comes out on 50 Year Member Sunday. I think God is just smiling down upon the service and the faith that you have brought to our church. With 50 Year Members, as Reverend Marie has said, having been here for not 50, but about 45, um, I have seen each and every one of our 50-year members teach and be role models, not only for children, but for those of us who are new to the church, who came in not really understanding what to do, and they became our role models, our leaders on our own journeys of faith. We're going to induct two classes this year since last year, unfortunately, with COVID, we were not allowed to meet. So I'm going to start with our most current class, the class of 2021. I'm going to ask only these people to come forward because we do have your 50-year member pin to be received and we'd like to recognize. Jean Brown joined and is now currently a fifth. Come on down, Jean. Kathy, I'll meet you halfway and give you your pin. Nora Stewart, who I've had the pleasure of singing with for a good 45 of the 50 years that she's been a member. Nora has just recently moved to Pennsylvania, but I understand the comment was, she will never change her membership. <laughs> and the, our next inductee into 50 year member, I don't know how she does it <laughs> all the time, but she has followed in the greatest role model she could have ever had her mother, Eleanor Reed, Nancy Teal. You can, go, you can go back and sit down now. Now you can sit down. I just wanted them to see your face. You can stay, Nor. It's OK. Our class of 2020 was Robert Perong, Kathleen Sosnovich, Janice Tamari, Pat Safka, and we are posthumously entering Bob Safka into that membership because unfortunately he was called to the great beyond prior to us being able to celebrate. We did receive a note from Pat. She says, all is well. She also gave me her new address, she has moved to Virginia, so I will leave this in the office for anyone who would like her new address, and it will be updated in the directory. All right, we're gonna start with the young'uns first. From the class, if, when I say your name, if you'd like to stand, you may. You do not have to. I know some of you are a little embarrassed. 1969, Charles Barony, who is doing well, Matthew, Okay, he was in the hospital last week, but he is home now. Matthew Barony, the Barony boys, Patricia Ederman, Edith Sojeda, and Mary Tappan. From the class of 1968, our beloved Cheryl Abatello, Leslie Kalita, Margaret Quinn, Amy Salvatore, and the guy who keeps getting more grandkids, Tommy Walsh. 1967 is Nicholas Salaji. 1966, you win, you got the most attendance. Roy Axelson, Janet Ginfrieda, Robin Goodrich, Linda Marasevich, and some guy named Robert Steffen. <laughs> 1965, William Van Bramer. 1964, Al Treziak. 
1962, William Balog. 1961, Bob Fales. 1959, John Eppensteiner, Jr. 1958, Betsy McEwen. 1957, Stu Brandau and Todd Howell. 1954, Eileen Clayton and Fred Clayton and Margaret Treziak. 1951, Nancy Dunham and James Ellick, who was basking in the sun of Key West. 1950, Audrey Superior. 1946, Donald Whitaker. And I'm pleased to announce that our two, our longest member and our next longest member actually made it. 1945, Fred Iverson. And our longest member, though she'll never admit it, from 1942, Marie Trost Stephan. At this time, though, I'd also like us to uh, take time to notice and honor those who have left us within the last two years and have joined our great cloud of witness. In 2020, from the class of 2020, Bob Safka. From the class of 1963, Eleanor Kucher. From the class of 1962, George Jones and Rose Peterson. From the class of 1953, Pat Diver Donovan Iverson. From the class of 1952, Ann Brecka. From the class of 1951, Paul Sojeda, Jr. Also from the class of 1951, our beloved Fred Briggs, Jr. 19, class of 1946, Jean Whitaker Griesheimer. And as Reverend Marie has noted in her sermon, from the class of 1934, our role model, our beloved saint, a member, not only the longest member, but she was our oldest member, Emma Early Arrow. I also would like to invite you all, please come next door for a look, coffee and a, a cookie or a cupcake. We have socially distanced the tables, so they are fairly far apart um, so that you can converse with others. Uh, masks are optional, but please come over and just say hello to them. I think a lot of them need to hear how wonderful they are for us. Thank you for allowing me to recognize them. We have now come to the point in our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. There are some that I do want to share with you. Um, Ed Muller um, has been diagnosed with COVID. He is doing well but um, he is, is quarantining along with Suzanne. So they are not here today, but things are going well. Are there others? Then with all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God in prayer first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, help us to remember your love in everything we do, every single day. And as we remember your love, remind us also to give thanks 
to those persons in our lives who taught us about you and your love. We don't take enough time, holy God, to look back. To look back and see where your seeds of grace and love and faithfulness, where they were sown, who helped sow them, and who tended to them. So it is good and important that we take the time to remember and to give thanks. Because our world and our days can get so busy. We can get caught up and lost in everything that pushes and pulls us this way and that. Help us, holy God, to slow down and notice. Notice all that you give us each and every day that point us to your love. The leaves, the grass, the flowers, the creatures, everything reminds us that you are with us always. And all of this, holy God, helps us when life gets hard, as it always does. And we know that we can turn to you with so many others, with us now and who have gone before us. And so we, with confidence, we pray. We pray for all those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray with all those people who celebrate and rejoice this day, knowing that their celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray, holy God, for all of those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, holy God, for those who wrestle with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray, holy God, for all those people who freely give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred, and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of our world. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, sowing the next generation's seeds of love and grace and faithfulness. We pray this prayer, as all prayers, in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As the people of God, we are called to be justice for the oppressed, food for the hungry, freedom for the imprisoned, and sight for the blind. Let us lift up those in need as we share gifts for the church's mission. 
you may leave your offering in the plate in the back do it online or mail it in or drop it in the mailbox by the office door Please join me in our prayer of dedication. God of justice and love, transform these offerings that they may be gifts of justice and love for a world in need of hope and help. Let love flow through these offerings that they may become gifts of love for the world. Amen. Amen. 